ahead and get, thank you Michael very much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, try and stick on the schedule as much as we can. We have something called Secure Estate Management, and this is the wealth portion of this talk today. And I have Ron Klein, who is a great gentleman here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. He's done a great job of helping organize this thing. It's all yours, Ron. Thank, thank you. you. So, thank you all for coming out today on such a beautiful uh, Saturday, Santa Barbara afternoon. I know it's tough to not be outside, but what you're going to hear today is not your typical RIA meeting kind of stuff. But I, I do want to mention a couple things about this group in particular. Um, part of my part of the entertainment, if you will, with secure estate management is I work specifically with real estate investors. That's almost solely who I typically work with as clients. Part of that is because I love real estate. The other is I'm a flipper. I flip in Phoenix. And uh, I find that the personal bank model and the resources that it creates, which you'll hear a lot more about here in a few minutes, is perfect for what we do, right? We all need resources to do our real estate stuff pay our bills and all of that, and this is a terrific tool. Today, we're matching health and wealth together. And what's really interesting about this is that um, a lot of times you, you'll see these kinds of uh, programs advertised, and they're talking about Wall Street stuff, <clears throat> typical doctors. But I want something to stick in your brain. If you forget everything, except this one thing, here's what I want you to remember. So my uh, uh, good buddy since the fourth grade, uh, the, my angel and my physician, Dr. Saunders, who's gonna be speaking today, had this terrific quote that I want you to remember about everything you'll hear today. And that is, everything you've heard is wrong. We've all been a little brainwashed to think a little uh, a certain way about how we build wealth, how we handle medicine, and what, you're, what you'll hear today is, I won't say contrary, but very different. And I'm a, um, a living representation of both the personal bank and something other than just standard Western medicine and the success that both can bring. So you're going to hear some new stuff today, some things that you may be skeptical about, and both my colleague Vimmel, who will be speaking in a few minutes, and Dr. Saunders are very approachable, so please bombard them with lots of questions later. Um, one of the nice things that I like about this group that's really terrific is there's a nice mix of folks who have been doing it for a while, who are new and learning, but Dan goes way out of his way to create uh, resources like the software and the discounts and so forth that uh, he just mentioned to help people get started and to advance them in careers, their career or their investing, that sort of thing. And um, as, you know, I've only been doing real estate investing for a couple of years myself. Something I wanted to do for a very long time and finally got off the dime and did it, but this, group, this organization works very hard at giving you opportunities to get off the dime and do it. And that's not typical, by the way. I work with a lot of different groups around the state, and um, a lot of them, I'm sorry to say, really focus on selling programs. That's not what this is all about. So I applaud you all for being here and participating in what uh, Dan and Maria and Michael, the whole family, put together, because it really really gets you active in actually doing it. And my guess is they probably even hold your hand a little bit and drag you along when you need a little bit, right? A little push, right? So uh, again, I'm Ron Klein. I'm the local guy uh, for secure estate management. Um, our thing is personal banks and the personal banking concept. This concept has actually been around for over 100 years. And it's the way that my grandparents actually built their nest egg and retired. Um, it's a little anti-Wall Street, 
Like I said, what you're going to hear is a little different than the usual typical message that you hear about investing and how you handle money. Um, and the same from Dr. Saunders on the health side. So be open to some new ideas. And I want to take you all through a very brief exercise of something that's a key component of the personal banking concept. Compounded wealth. So for those of you who happen to have your phones handy, pull out your calculator. And I want to walk you through a very, very simple, brief, quick, and easy concept that's really super important, a key component. The personal bank allows you to build secure, compounded, guaranteed income. That's pretty powerful stuff. And most of us in this room probably don't remember or even have experienced compounded interest. So here's my silly little exercise. Take $10,000 and multiply it times 5%, a very conservative amount of interest. A little bit of money, right? Take that number and multiply that times 5% again. Now do that one more time. That's compounded interest. Think about doing that over time. And we just did 5% against a small amount of money, $10,000. Now think about being able to do that over and over and over and never interrupting that chain and continuing to get compounded, uninterrupted compounded interest over time. I have two daughters, 17 and 21. One graduating from high school next year, one graduating from college next year. Think about them taking small amounts of their money and doing this over time, compounding interest, and having it guaranteed year over year over year. That's pretty powerful. And I believe that in the presentation that um, Bimmel has, that um, there may even be a chart in there of, of 10, 15, 20 years, and you'll see how powerful compounded interest is. And by the way, for those of us who are on the youngish side, you know, this used to be the regular thing. Compounded interest used to be the regular thing at the bank. My grandparents, when I was in college three million years ago, <laughs> were getting double digits, 12 and 13 percent compounded interest on T-bills and CDs. We don't have that anymore in this environment. So we want to return to safe, guaranteed growth and income. And that's exactly what the personal banking concept does. So without further ado, let me introduce my colleague at Secure Estate Management, Bimal Patel. Bimal, thank you. Um, I tend to speak a little soft. So I need some help from the folks in the back. Can you hear me? Everything's yeah. OK, excellent. Yeah. So um, a little background on me. Um, and Michael, I think, I'll just press this button. Mm -hmm. okay. So a little background. I'm actually, this is my, I have multiple careers. Um, I'm a believer of living life to its fullest. What does that mean? I don't believe that any one of us are specific to any one kind of career, in terms of you have many interests. So my initial career, and still is, is I'm actually a pharmacist. And I used to have a compounding pharmacy way back when, 30 years ago. I actually am now a board certified clinical nutritionist. I also am an addictionologist and a homeopath. Um, Dr. Scott back there and I both, uh, if you don't mind me calling you by your first name, all right. Um, both are actually involved in something called functional medicine. Um, I'm sure you know Jeffrey Bland as well. So what does all that mean? What we're talking about is that life is not just a single way of doing things. Life includes many different approaches. 
And what we have a tendency of doing in the way that our culture and our philosophy is, they tend to put you in a box and say, this is all you can do. This is the way you're going to learn to do things. And so today, what I'd like you to do is, I'd like to introduce you to personal banking. But I want, you, I want to introduce it to you as a concept. Right? We're actually going to be doing a workshop on July 21st, right, uh, right in this very location, on a Saturday. And that's when we'll do the deep dive. Okay? Now, the other thing is, as much as I love to hear my own voice, that's not why I'm up here. So I want you guys to be involved and make it interactive. So stop me at any time, ask me questions. I want to make sure that when you leave this room, you have an idea of what personal banking concept and the strategies that are involved in that, how they can be useful to you. Okay. So as I'm talking about the concept, think about how does it involve me? How, do, how can I apply this in my life, in what I want to do with my health and wealth aspects? Does that make sense? Okay. So our mission is to improve financial futures of individuals and families. Um, and I'll go through this a little quicker as well, so because I, I want to make sure that I, I get to the point where you are asking me questions, because as I mentioned, you want to make sure you walk out of this room with the idea of what personal banking is all about. So the idea here is creating sustainable wealth. What does that mean? Do we want to have wealth or financial systems that stay with us for the rest of our life? that we're able to maybe pass on to the next generation? Right? Why are we all here today at a real estate investment meeting? Why are we here? Yeah, go for it. Oh, um, Gabriel? Uh, to get into like the real estate investment uh, industry. Right, well, why do you want to get into real estate? Make money. Make money. Make money work for me. Make money work for you, okay. How long do you want to do that? How long do you want the money to work for you? Forever. 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 Several generations. Several generations. Okay. How, how are you going to manage that with the ups and downs of the financial industry and the financial system right now? Long-range thinking. Correct. Long-range thinking. Now, what is the typical long-range thinking that is told to people out there in terms of where to park your money? 401 Ks. 401Ks. IRAs, mutual yes. funds. Sorry? Mutual funds. Mutual funds, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, retirement accounts, right? What are all the mutual, uh, what, are, what are all of those things have in common? Risk. Risk. Okay. Risk to what? Risking your capital, right? There is nothing out there in what we just talked about that guarantees that you will not lose the money that you have worked hard to earn. Does that make sense? Yes. So today, I'd like you to just kind of think about that. that if, and, and I'm a bit of a writer as well, so I'm going to kind of use this board right here. So I want you to think about this. And Doc, I know you like the white board, so I'm going to use this one here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very simple concept. Can everyone see that T? Yes, yes. All right. When you generate income, is the income taxable or tax-free? Taxable. Taxable. Okay, so this here is all the different types of income. That you can make. All right? So, All income that you make is taxable, yes? Is there anything out there that is not taxable? You mean like a real estate transaction? Any kind of... 1031 exchange? 1030, sorry, 1031 exchange, right? What does a 1031 exchange do? It, um, it's a shelter where it's non-taxable. Right. Defers the tax. Defer, there you go. It's a deferment, right? That means you're going to pay tax in the future. Right? You can't get away from Uncle Sam getting his piece, right? You're not paying it today, but what you're doing is you're pushing it off into the future, right? So that's called tax deferred, right? So that's...
tax deferred. What's happening? You're making income in this box, and you really don't want to pay the capital gains income tax on that, right? So what you're going to do is your accountant says, hey, and what do we do when we go to our accountant? I want you to lower my taxes. I don't want to pay any taxes today or this year. Well, make it as low as possible, please, right? So what does the accountant do? Accountants account for your money. When? Today. Are they accounting for your money tomorrow? Are we even, are we thinking and telling the accountant, you know, it's glad that you're having me tax defer this for payments in the future, but here's my question for you. How much tax are you gonna pay in the future? Does anyone know? Who, who decides how much tax you're gonna pay in the future? Is, right, is it in your hands? Whose hands is it? Your silent partner. Right? You thought you, you, thought you, were, you were a husband and wife, you were just like spouses? No. You've got a silent partner who's with you all the time, and that's Uncle Sam, right? Now what does Uncle Sam do? Uncle Sam decides how much tax you're going to pay in the future. Do you get to choose how much tax you get to pay in the future? No. 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 So who's in control? Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam, not you, right? So I'm going to write control. Who has access to the money that you've deferred into the future? So is it you? No. Okay, if you put it in a retirement account, like qualified plans, IRAs, 401ks, any of those types of things, can you access that money if an opportunity comes along for some real estate investing? Yes. How long? How long can you access? Can you access 401k retirement money for investing? Can you take a loan against it? You can take a loan against it. But if you were to access retirement money, qualified plans, what's going to happen? Oh, you get taxed. You're going to get taxed and penalties, right? The whole concept of retirement is, for, is so that you don't touch the money until you are 59 and a half, right? So let, let's get this right. A lot, of your, a lot of the audience here is young, right? In your 20s. You're making money today, and you're going to be putting that money away for the next 40 years before you can touch it. You're growing a pie that you have no idea how much you're going to get taxed on. Do you? No. No. Who has control over the tax amount? Congress. Uncle Sam, our private. Yeah, exactly. So your, your silent partner is in essence, doing this. Why don't you, and I'm going to use, um, is it Fernando? Yes. You don't mind? Okay, so, yeah, Fernando, I tell you what, why don't you retire, why don't you put some money away in retirement? Because, you know, once you get older, you're going to need money, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and take that $10,000, put it out in retirement. By the way, it's, I'll tell you what, I'll hold it for you, right? I'm Uncle Sam. I'm going to hold it for you. We want to make sure we invest it, right? <clears throat> what is the thing about investment? Everyone says investment. The minute you start saying investment, there is always risk attached to investment, right? Mm -hmm. So what you have done is that $10,000 that you put away that you don't get to touch for 40 years from now is now in an investment account, which means it's now subject to risk, no loss. subject to loss. That means your principal is subject to risk. So you've just earned 10K. Everyone knows what 10K means, right? Yeah. Okay. Just, that's, my, that's my little joke. <laughs> <laughs> you just earned turn 10K. I think I turned this off as well. We can get that back, back on. Okay. If you... No. I used to work at the university for 26 years, and tech support is my thing. Uh, I think and I just finally, stepped on it. Did you? <laughs> okay, and finally, I got, 
I got stuck here and trapped one day in one of these meetings. This will take a little bit to come back on. And I was very frustrated. And I had somebody help me out, and it was my son. And I went, finally. <laughs> Could you do it? Okay. So we're going to have warm back it up. Yeah, that's a bad place. For that's that. a bad place. Yeah. Bad place. By the way, since you, since you have it on pause, mm -hmm. um, and since we're recording this, mic, mm -hmm. am I in the right position, or do you want me to move this a little bit? That's perfect. Okay. So we'll give it. And normally it's not supposed to be turned off. How do you like it so far? Good. Okay. okay. Very good. Yeah. Makes sense? Makes sense. Yeah. All right. um, the light behind the chart uh, uh, shadows the chart. The chart. You know, the bright light. Yes. Uh, how do we turn that off? Do we, do do we can, you want to move it forward? Yeah. Or turn the light off. We can turn, those lights, we can turn the lights down, but yeah. that'd be good. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah. All right, where we left it. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get brighter as the bulb gets light lit up a bit more, yeah. Okay, so Fernando, hmm? remember the ten thousand dollars that you gave me? Yep. All right. Uncle Sam, your silent partner, is going to basically make sure that look, I care about you. I want to make sure that when you retire, you have money to live on. Okay, Fernando? Mm -hmm. So me as your silent partner, I'm gonna take care of you by putting it into this special place where we're gonna invest it, right? And it's gonna grow. And guess what? As it grows, I'm gonna be a nice guy. I'm not even gonna charge you any taxes on that growth, okay? So let's say that that 10,000 turns into 40,000, all right? You're now 65 and you're ready to, to take that money out. You come to me and go, hey, Uncle Sam, I'm, I'm ready to retire. I'd like to take some of that 40,000. What am I going to say to you? Well, Fernando, you know, it's 40 years down the road and uh, I gotta tax you now because you know, it's income mm -hmm. and I need my share. And so I'm gonna tax you. How much am I gonna tax you at? Whatever I choose. Why? Because, because there is no contract mm -hmm. that says that I, Uncle Sam, I can only charge an X amount to you, mm -hmm. right? Today, historically, we're in the lowest tax brackets, right? They lowered everything down. Is it going to get any lower than this as far as taxing is concerned? No, right? Because we, look, what's the debt that we have? 21 trillion dollars, right? How are we going to service the debt? If, if I have a 21, million, 21 trillion dollar debt, if you have a 21 trillion dollar debt, how are you going to service it? You either got to work more to earn more, which means Uncle Sam earns more how? Taxes, right? Or I got to save. Are we saving as a country, as a society? <clears throat> no. So what's going to happen? How am I going to reduce the $21 trillion if I'm not going to save and I'm not going to earn more money? So the only way that I'm going to earn more money and save is by doing what? By coming to you, right, Fernando, and saying, remember that $10,000 that you put aside for your retirement? And by the way, thank you for keeping it for your retirement. Because as you made that pie grow to 40,000, how much of that pie can I take now, Uncle Sam? How much can Uncle Sam of that take of that pie? However much you want. Whatever I want. Why? Because I'm the one making the rules. Hmm? Yeah. Are you in control? No. no. What have you just done? You earned hard you earned money, right? Hard earned money, and you gave it all, you gave the control over of that money to someone else. You have no concept of when you can touch that money because I can change, I can say, you know, Fernando, buddy, we're now at 25 trillion, man. I just, I just, we don't know how we're gonna handle this. You know, I told you I'd give it to you at 65, but my buddies in Congress and I, we've decided to change that to 70. 
Who makes the law? Who makes the rules? Not you. So you've lost control of your money. That money has grown at four, to forty thousand dollars, right? And so you don't know how much of that money you're going to get. You don't know when you're going to get it, and you don't know how much you're going to get taxed on it. Does that sound like a good deal for you? Absolutely not. How many of us are putting money away in 401k IRA accounts? We have to admit it. <laughs> How many of you are told that if you want to retire, the way to retire is to invest into retirement accounts? We're all told that, right? When were, when were IRA 401ks made? in 79, 78, 79. That's when Uncle Sam, that's when Uncle Sam figured out that, you know what, I'm gonna run out of money. And I gotta figure out a way for all the workers that are working out there to save money for me. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, does it? Now, let's talk about another thing. So, is the money that you earn is it safe? No. Why is it not safe? Because you've given away control mm -hmm. and you've put it into something that you have, you have no idea when you're going to get it back and you don't know how much you're going to get taxed. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what tax deferred is about. Okay? So this is where your 401ks, <clears throat> your IRAs, what we call qualified plans. All of that sitting there. What you're doing is you're earning money here, and you're going to your accountant saying, man, I don't want to pay taxes today. So can you push it out? Oh, because I don't want to pay taxes today. Well, I want to pay as little taxes as today. So what does, your, what, does, what does your accountant do? He takes money from here, and he pushes it out here. Right? Now, there's this other thing up here. Remember I drew this T. What is this above the line? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip over. Okay, remember guys we talked about taxable, tax deferred. <coughs> okay? What's up here? What's in this special box compartment? Mm -hmm. This is the part, remember, there's something called tax-free money. What are the types of things that are tax-free? Business expenses. Uh, no, income that's tax-free. Mm. So let me give you an example, right? Social Security. No, Social Security is taxed. Gifts? So, when you collect? Yeah. 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 Gifts. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so certain gifts mm -hmm. under a certain amount who decides, by the way, how much that amount is? You? Yeah. Uncle Sam. So who's in control of the gift thing? Okay. Not you. All right? So yes, you can have gifts up to a certain point. Right? So this is tax-free. Okay? Gifts. What about uh, if... Uh, your rich uncle dies and he leaves you in his will. Inheritance. Up to a certain point. But the nice thing is, today at least, again, what's the amount? What's the ceiling on your inheritance? If you're a couple, you can go as high as how much? No, it's, uh, it's if you're a couple, the